Hey folks, welcome to the program. It's great to see you. And if I might add, you are looking exceptionally lovely this evening. That is a really nice shirt, by the way. So in today's episode, we're going to be going back to the year 1989, where we're going to take a look at a forgotten little gem called the Dream Team. Ah, it's great to be young and insane. From Imagine Entertainment and Universal Pictures, The Dream Team is a whimsical comedy directed by the late Howard Zeef, who was originally an advertising photographer before moving on to filmmaking. In fact, it was Zeef who was responsible for this classic Elka Seltzer ad. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! He then went on to much greater success directing the smash hit comedy Private Benjamin, starring Goldie Hawn. Later, Zeef would go on to direct the hugely popular film My Girl, as well as its sequel, My Girl 2, The Legend of Culkin's Gold. Sadly, he was forced to retire soon after due to his battle with Parkinson's. But before that, he gave us the Dream Team, a fun little romp with an all-star cast, including Michael Keaton, who was fresh off his success with Tim Burton's Beetlejuice and was quickly making headlines for his upcoming film, a little-known movie called Batman. Starring alongside Keaton is a living legend himself, the great Christopher Lloyd, as well as the ever-talented Peter Boyle and Stephen First, who was previously known for his role as Flounder in the hit movie Animal House, as well as his forgotten spin-off show, Delta House. Also joining the cast are other Hollywood greats like Lorraine Bracco, Dennis Boussacaris, Philip Bosco, and James Reamer, who some of you younger viewers may recognize as Dexter's dad. Now the movie starts off like every great movie, inside a mental hospital where we soon see Henry, played by Christopher Lloyd, as he diligently makes his rounds at Cedarbrook Psychiatric Hospital in Trenton, New Jersey. And after briefly assaulting one of the nurses, Henry goes on to collect several of the patients for their group therapy session. His first stop is the rec room, where we see Billy Caulfield, played by Keaton, who's in the midst of an intense and heated ping pong match against his arch rival, Kenny. Now focus, all right? Henry then goes to the TV room, where we see Stephen First's character, Albert, as he gleefully sings along to the national anthem before enjoying a baseball game on the tube. And the home of the brave. But unfortunately, Henry, being a total dick, puts a stop to it and then berates poor Albert about him stealing a cupcake from another patient. Albert, that's Brian's cupcake. The catcher batting fifth, Mickey Tenley. The designated hitter batting sixth, Jim Traber. Ken Gerhardt batting seventh in center field. Joe Orsillac will be in right. But Albert's like, screw that, I'm stuck in this shitty ass hospital dealing with your uptight dink ass. I'm taking this cupcake. And then the two make their way to one of the patients' room where we see Jack, played by Peter Boyle, sitting bare ass naked, reading the Bible, and drinking a bottle of damn fine Beaujolais. So I myself have never actually stayed at a psychiatric hospital, but I'm not really sure if patients are allowed to have alcohol. Isn't that like, you know, contraband or something? I don't know. Anyway, after convincing Jack to cover his young Frankenstein, Henry leads the two into a room before stepping out to confer with his colleagues. And this is where we learn that the movie was duping us the whole time, and that Henry is not actually a doctor at all, but rather one of the patients. Henry then returns to the others and is joined by Billy, where the two get into a heated dispute over proper chair etiquette, and Billy tries to savagely murder Henry. Straighten out the chair! But luckily, their therapist, Dr. Weitzman, bursts into the room and manages to calm everyone down with nothing more than his rugged yet sophisticated good looks and magnificent beard. Looks like one of our chairs tried to make a break for it, huh? They then start the session, and we get to find out a little bit about each of the characters and why they're in the hospital. Billy is a chronic liar with a violent temper. Henry has obsessive OCD and a need for order. Everything is so disorganized. Such a mess. Jack was once a bigwig ad exec who developed a severe Christ fixation. Well, my original goal was to rid my agency of Satan's influence and to bring Jesus Christ back into the advertising business, where he belongs. And we're not too clear on Albert's condition, other than the fact that he only speaks in baseball metaphor. You know, kind of like Darmok in that Next Generation episode. Darmok and Gilad at Tanagra. 
After the session, Dr. Weissman tells the group that he snagged some Yankees tickets and that they're going to be taking a field trip to New York. Does that mean we are actually leaving the hospital ground? No, the Yankees are going to come here and play. They're going to throw some lights up in the rec room. What a stroker. However, Weitzman's boss, Dr. Newhall, isn't too thrilled about the idea. Well, I'm not sure what the therapeutic value of a ballpark Frank is for four psychotics. But alas, Weitzman convinces Newhall to let them go when they load up the van, put in a kick-ass mixtape, and hit the road for the Big Apple. When they finally arrive in the city, they're forced to make an emergency stop in some ghetto-ass looking area. Albert's gotta go! Albert's gotta go! Oh, Christ, he's gonna piss all over the back seat, Doc! We need a canoe to float out of here! Taking Albert down a side alley to tinkle, Dr. Weitzman hears some commotion coming from a nearby building and starts to investigate. He soon witnesses a murder by two men, and as Weitzman tries to run away, the two men chase after him and attack him, knocking him unconscious before fleeing the scene while Albert watches everything from behind a nearby dumpster. After a while, Billy and the others start getting really pissy when the doctor doesn't return. But just then, Albert shows up, but he refuses to tell the others what happened to Weitzman. Where the hell did you go to take that piss? Moscow? Where's Dr. Weitzman, Albert? He'll be here in a minute. We're on a very tight schedule. So that's when Billy decides to frig off and he bounces. Soon followed by Jack. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Out of my way, asshole. And then eventually Henry, who then leaves Albert in charge of watching the van. We then go to Billy as he strolls into a random bar and orders a beer. Suddenly his attention is drawn to Lorraine Brocco, who's being harassed by a table of scumbags. And in pure Michael Keaton fashion, Billy handles the situation like a total boss. I'm an escaped mental patient with a history of violence. He's then chased down by Lorraine Brocco, where we soon learn that the two had a previous relationship before Billy got sent to the hospital. We go to Jack as he enters a local church and is immediately enthralled by the gospel in the air. Meanwhile, Henry is at a sports bar, and we learn that Henry is a raging alcoholic. I need two Long Collins, two Jack Daniels, one on the rocks, and a Heineken. Please. We cut to Albert, strolling down the street, where he makes some new friends. Back at the bar, Henry is making some new friends of his own. At the Gospel Church, Jack stands and gives a rousing sermon where he then begins to take off his clothes. And just as he was about to go full boil, Henry shows up and ruins the show. This man is clinically insane! He is presently undergoing treatment in the Cedarbrook Hospital under my supervision! The movie then goes to the police station, where we learn that the two guys that attacked Weitzman are actually two corrupt cops who murdered a fellow police officer who was investigating them. Only now they have a new problem to solve with Dr. Weitzman. A dead man is not a witness. Back to Billy and Lorraine Brocco as they stroll down the street, where Billy learns that Lorraine Brocco is not only a terrible actress, but is also living with a guy named Ed, which totally pisses Billy off. Which, to be fair, is completely understandable. I mean, that's Michael friggin' Keaton, in his prime, and you're not gonna wait around for him, and you're gonna shack up with a guy with a name like Ed? Anyway, being the class act that he is, Keaton handles the situation with dignity and poise. We go to Jack and Henry as they witness somebody stealing the van and Albert. The carjacker then decides to let them keep Albert, but he's still taking the van. But hey, at least at this point, things can't possibly get any worse for him. This is God's way of telling us we're going to die. 
Making their way to an army surplus store, Billy manages to sweet talk the owner into selling them a stylish new outfit for Jack for a very reasonable price. All right, we're four escape lunatics. Yes, I believe. The gang then swings over to the police department to report a missing persons report, but it's NYPD, so the desk sergeant couldn't give a tinker's piss and tells them to frig off. What kind of bonehead cop would send four confessed mental patients back out in the streets? It's not his fault. He's not as competent as we are. Soon after, the others find out from Albert that Dr. Weissman was taken away in an ambulance. Did they take Weissman away in an ambulance? Big inning. That's a definite yes. All he said was big inning. Yeah, yeah, but he nodded when he said a watch. Big inning. See? Searching the local hospitals, the gang finally locate Dr. Weitzman at the same time the two dirty cops show up to take him out. After thwarting their attempt, the gang is then accused of the attempted murder of Weitzman and are forced to flee. They then call Dr. Newhall to explain their situation, but Newhall isn't buying it and he sends the cops after them. With nowhere else to go, the group go to Lorraine Bracco's place and we meet her boyfriend Ed. Who is portrayed by Michael Lembeck, son of veteran actor Harvey Lembeck, who is known for his role as Harry Shapiro in the POW classic Stalag 17. But unlike his lovable dad, Michael Lembeck is a total prick who decides to call the cops on Billy and the others after he sees a news report on how they tried to kill Weitzman. Okay, does that go out the window? Let's have a show of hands. And so the group is again forced to flee. Unfortunately, Albert doesn't make it and he ends up getting arrested. And then Billy sees how fun it looks and decides to get arrested too. With nowhere else to go, Jack and Henry decide to split up. Jack goes to seek the help of one of his colleagues from his marketing days and he ends up getting arrested because for some reason Jack thought he could trust a slimy New York yuppie douche. We then go to Henry who pays a visit to his estranged wife and daughter. He's then forced to look at his daughter's terrible drawings before he bribes her with his clipboard just to get her to leave. Thanks. You're very welcome. He then scams his wife out of the last of her money before immediately bouncing. Henry then goes to the jail to bail out the others, but because he's a moron who's wanted for attempted murder, he promptly gets arrested. So now they're all sharing a cell, waiting to be taken back to the hospital when Albert steps up to Billy and gives him a quick pep talk. He called me a shithead. Which inspires Billy and the others to escape so they can save Weitzman. And after an extremely tense standoff, the gang manages to escape their captors, steal an ambulance, and quickly cheese it for the hospital. They then manage to get to Weitzman, however once they're outside the hospital, they're quickly accosted by the dirty cops. Albert, being a total badass, takes out Philip Bosco with a little help from Henry. Meanwhile, Billy squares off against James Reamer, who uses Lorraine Bracco as a hostage. He threatens to shoot her, to which Billy replies, Go ahead. I got lots of girlfriends. Realizing that he's no match for Batman, Reamer quickly surrenders. The crooked cops are soon arrested and all is well. Before they leave for Cedarbrook, Lorraine Bracco suggests that Billy be released from the hospital, because apparently now he's cured of his violent and psychopathic behavior, even though a few minutes ago he happily threatened to shoot a cop in the face. But Weitzman agrees anyway, so it's all good. I'm going to agree with my colleague. I think it looks pretty good. On the way back to Cedarbrook, Albert mentions to Billy that the Yankees are playing a doubleheader. So they all decide to ditch Weissman at the hospital before stealing the van and hightailing it back to New York for another adventure, leaving open the possibility of a sequel which, sadly, never came to be. Play ball. Now despite the fact that this movie reached the number two spot upon release, just barely losing out to another comedy classic, Major League, and having a box office gross of nearly $29 million off a $15 million budget, the reviews for the Dream Team have been rather mixed. One critic noted, The film is so clearly derived from the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest that you might begin to wonder when Jack Nicholson will show up. Which honestly, I totally disagree with. I mean, aside from the fact that it's based around mental patients and the fact that Christopher Lloyd happens to be in both films, I find the story and the tone very, very dissimilar. As of now, the Dream Team sits at 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. And here's an interesting little tidbit. There's actually an Indian Hindi language remake of the Dream Team called Krazy 4, released in 2008. Well, that was the Dream Team, a real gem that I've enjoyed for over three decades now and will always have a tiny little place in my heart. 
And if you've never had the pleasure, I highly encourage you to run out to your nearest Blockbuster and pick up a copy today. Who knows, you just might thank me. So from me to you, wishing you the very best, remember, take the time to appreciate the little things, and always, keep it real. Bye-bye.